Hey everyone, Exusio here. Welcome back to part 3 of my Zelda playthrough. Today I'm going to be going through the Eastern Palace. I can never remember what the name of those tentacle things are, but they, uh, they usually drop a lot of money, kind of like the rats in the sewers. Also, these cannonballs have a pattern to them, so if you're quick enough, you can usually get past them before that big one comes out, but I was a little slow on it that time. Hundred rupees in that chest. Go on this side and get the map. I hate the skeletons here because they jump back from your sword and they're hard to hit. They're easy, easier if you can hit them with a pot, like if there's a room with them and pots in it. This uh, anti fairy here, you can sprinkle magic powder on him and it'll turn into a regular fairy. If you can catch the bottle. Well, I didn't swing the net quick enough. Um, I know I said I don't normally like, you know, I'd rather use the magic or the, the health potion than, than the fairies, but uh, when you're low health like this, you know, they're just as effective because I think they heal up to six hearts. Uh, that was the map. Also, in a playthrough, I'll usually try to uh, fill out the entire map in 100%. This one, I. Uh, there's not any rooms you can miss in this dungeon, so I'm not worried about it, but in, in later dungeons, like bigger ones, I'll make sure I check the map and I've completed all the rooms. Like, here a bunch of skeletons pop up, and if quick enough you can hit a couple of them before they start moving around. And again, they're easier to hit with pots and trying to swing your sword at. Then here's the compass. Now all I need is the big key. These tiles on the wall here, Sash Rolla talks to you telepathically and he gives you hints for the dungeons. Um, in this particular one, he tells you that the treasure hidden in the palace is uh, good against armored foes. Uh, you get the bow and arrow in this dungeon, it's in that chest right there. The armored foes he's talking about, well, they're these green guys right here, but they can be killed with a pot. There's a red version of them that have to be killed with an arrow, and they take two arrows to be killed. Also, uh, the weapon or item that you get in a dungeon is usually very effective against the uh, boss of those dungeons. I'm just going to avoid these guys. I'm not going to try to mess with them or turn them into fairies. They reset, so you don't have to worry about them being right up on you when you go come out of that door. And in this room is where the big key is located. Uh, those anti fairies that are around that pot go away once you kill all the enemies in this room. you want to watch out but after you do that because they go spinning all around the room you don't want to get hit by them because not only do they take your life they also drain your magic so be careful of that 
And under the pot that they were guarding is a button that opens treasure chest, which has the big key in it. I just gotta wait for them to get out of the top area there so I can go through that door. It takes them a while. There we go. Now, now it's on to get the treasure. Once you open this chest, four skeletons drop down. They're different than the blue skeletons. They're like gray or green headed, but their heads will fly off if you don't hit them soon enough and, and chase you around the room for a moment. You can't actually kill them. They just bounce away. So they're pretty annoying. No. Oh. Now, before I go through that door, I'm going to drop down in this pot here, because there's a secret room with two fairies in it that I can catch and keep in a bottle. And this will just teleport me right back here. This room is pain lights out. Wait just one of them up. There we go, got the key. I'm not gonna go through that door yet. There's a room over here that is full of blue rupees. And now I'll use the key and go upstairs. Uh. I think this dungeon has the largest amount of these anti-fairies of any dungeon in the game. Uh, so it's kind of a good idea to have the magic powder uh, from the witch to go ahead and do that before you enter this dungeon, because that way you can take care of them easier. much easier to kill those guys with an arrow. But again, they can be hit with pots too. This is the top left switch. There's one of those red guys I was talking about. You have to use the... Uh, bow and arrow against him. Takes two shots, but fortunately they always drop, well they usually drop um, quite a bit of arrows, so you can replenish your arrows fairly easily. Uh, this tiles on the ground here with faces usually means that through the door it, uh, in the next room or the room after is going to be the boss. Pots and on the boss. The trick to this boss, you gotta be as quick as possible, but get in this spot right here and turn your back to the wall and then start shooting them with arrows. And if you're quick enough, because they'll start spinning around the room, you'll get uh, most of them before they have a chance to 
form this line in the wall. Uh, once you kill off all of them but one, the last one will turn red and start trying to hit you, like stomp on you around the room. But you can hit him in midair with the arrows and stop him. I'm not sure why, but kind of weird. There's another heart container, and here is the pendant. Uh, pendant of courage, I believe. First one you get. Yeah. And it teleports you out of the dungeon after refilling your health and magic. Let's take this back to him, and he'll give me the Pegasus boot. And tell me more of the legend of the great war that happened uh, between the Hylia. And he tells you about an item hidden in the uh, lake uh, east of Lake Hylia. Uh, he's either talking about the, uh, I think it's the ice rod he's referring to, but uh, there also is the good bee located uh, in a cave over there. So, but he's probably talking about the ice rod. Now that I have the boots, I can dash, which is really helpful. Uh, next thing I want to do, because uh, you have to get a book from the library uh, south of the town, you have to dash into a bookshelf to get it, and it's the only way to open passage to the next dungeon, which is in the desert. So we're gonna head back to the town. Dashing makes this a whole lot easier. you can avoid a lot of things by doing that. So up here on the ledge, there should be a pile of rocks I can dash into and collect another heart piece. south here. Leave the town to the south. And that's the library. Go in here. If you dash against this bookshelf, it'll knock that book down. And that'll open the passage to the dungeon in the desert. And that's about all the time I have for this episode. Uh, See you next time in part four, where I'll continue on to the desert and then the uh, dungeon in the desert. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.